Based on its anatomical features, Hupesicus is believed to have been a fully aquatic reptile. Its streamlined body, paddle-like limbs, and well-developed tail indicate that it was well adapted for life in the water. One of its most notable features is its toothless jaw. Instead of teeth, it had a unique structure called a rostral blade, which was likely used to capture and filter small prey such as fish and invertebrates from the water. Its classification within the reptile evolutionary tree is still debated among scientists. Eretmeripus were reptiles that hunted in the sea, looking a lot like primitive ichthyosaurs, though not directly related to them. Its feet still have clearly defined toes whereas in most other genera they are formed into rudimentary flippers. It has three overlapping layers of armor-like osteoderms over its spine, but the osteoderms of the uppermost layer are significantly larger than they are in other Hupasuchians. Carterinchus had a streamlined body with a long snout and numerous sharp teeth. This characteristic may have allowed it to capture prey in narrow crevices or specialize in feeding on certain types of prey. Based on its dentition, it is believed that was a durophagus reptile. It is significant in understanding the early evolution of ichthyosaurs and their diversity during the early Triassic. It represents a transitional form between earlier marine reptiles and the more derived ichthyosaurs that appeared later. Due to its heavy build and body shape, Sclerocormus likely inhabited shallow waters, and was probably a slow swimmer. The narrow, toothless snout indicates it was likely a suction feeder, using its snout to generate syringe-like pressure concentration to suck in soft-bodied prey. Due to the small size of its jaws and head relative to its body, it would have been limited to feeding on prey much smaller than itself. Tholidus, a rare marine reptile of debated affinity and with a peculiar durophagus dentition, is for the first time recorded outside the Muschelkalk Basin of Central Europe. Parts of a mandibular ramus and a maxilla, both bearing teeth and nearly uncrushed, have been found in the northeastern Italy. The tooth implantation is relatively complex, with both alveolate and ankylosed teeth. One thing that we can be a little certain about Omphalosaurus is the diet. Its teeth are blunt and rounded, and usually these kinds of teeth are seen in animals that eat hard-bodied items. In reference to Omphalosaurus specifically this would be shellfish which would have had their hard outer shells broken up by the teeth so that the soft inside could then be swallowed by the feeding Omphalosaurus. Caohurus had a similar body plan to other primitive ichthyosaurs being more lizard-like than fish-like as seen in later ichthyosaurs. Still, its limbs were adapted to form paddles, and the rear half of the tail dipped down slightly to form a paddle that was the primary form of forward locomotion. At least one known specimen of Caohurus shows embryos of young developing inside the body of an adult, confirming that it was viviparous and did not have to return to the land to lay eggs. Eutatsosaurus has approximately 40 presacral vertebrae which are cylindrical, suggesting that it probably swam with an eel-like motion. It has no dorsal fin and has a broad skull. The snout gently tapers, compared to the more rounded one of more derived ichthyopterygians. The postorbital underlaps the elongate posterior process of the postfrontal. This is an evident plesiomorphic condition for ichthyopterygians. Mixosaurus had a streamlined body with a long snout, slender limbs modified into paddle-like structures, and a powerful tail for swimming. Its body shape and adaptation suggest it was a fast and agile swimmer. Based on its tooth morphology, it is thought to have been a passivorous reptile. It represents an early stage in the evolution of ichthyosaurs, showing characteristics that would later become more pronounced in later forms of the group. 
it provides valuable insights into the early radiation and diversification of ichthyosaurs. Barracudasauroids represents a transitional ichthyosaur similar to Myxosaurus which is seen as a link between primitive and advanced ichthyosaurs. They inhabited marine environments, including seas and oceans, during the early Triassic. It coexisted with other marine organisms of the time, such as ammonoids, marine reptiles, and various fish species. Of particular interest is the rapid increase in body size undergone by ichthyosaurs early in their evolutionary history. Ichthyosaurs evolved from small ancestors such as Cartorhynchus to giant forms like Symbospondylus in the span of only 2.5 million years. This ichthyosaur had a streamlined body with a long snout, numerous sharp teeth, and a powerful tail for propulsion. Its limbs were modified into paddle-like structures, enabling it to swim efficiently in the water. It is believed to have been a passivorous predator, its sharp teeth were ideal for catching and gripping slippery prey. The long snout head of the Californosaurus is small in comparison with the rest of the body, as in basal ichthyosaurs. The tail is sharply turned downwards, in common with more advanced ichthyosaurs, with a small vertical fluke. It fed on fish and other small marine creatures. Like other ichthyosaurs it probably never ventured onto dry land, and gave birth in the water. Thalatorcarchan is a large-bodied ichthyosaur, measuring at least 9 meters long and weighing 4.5 metric tons. The only known skeleton is incomplete, but it can be inferred on the basis of other early ichthyosaurs to have had an elongated body and a weakly developed caudal fin. It is diagnosed by a single distinguishing feature that is unique among ichthyosaurs, large, thin teeth that bear two cutting edges and that have smooth tooth crowns. The entire body length of Himalayasaurus is estimated to have been over 15 meters in length. It has since been considered a dubious name because of the lack of features that set it apart from other ichthyosaurs, although the presence of distinct cutting edges on its teeth have more recently been proposed as a unique feature of the genus. Shastasaurus is known for being one of the largest marine reptiles that ever existed. Some species reached incredible lengths of up to 21 meters it was highly specialized, and differed considerably from other ichthyosaurs. It was very slender in profile, due to its unusually short, toothless snout it was proposed that it was a suction feeder, feeding primarily on soft-bodied cephalopods, although current research indicates ichthyosaur jaws do not fit the suction feeding profile. It is unknown whether it had a dorsal fin, However, the more basal ichthyosaur Myxosaurus had a dorsal fin. The upper fluke of the tail was probably much less developed than the shark-like tails found in later species. Shaunosaurus was also a huge ichthyosaur. At around 15 meters long it was roughly the same size as a modern humpback whale, with a long narrow snout, a fairly deep fusiform body, and four equally sized flippers. Juveniles had a few small teeth at the tips of their jaws, but larger adults were entirely toothless, suggesting that they may have specialized in different ecological niches at different stages of their lives. Fully grown Shaunosaurus probably mostly fed on prey such as soft-bodied cephalopods and small fish, which must have been incredibly abundant in the ancient Nevadan Sea to support a population of such huge marine reptiles.
Leptonex is sometimes envisioned using its snouts to stir up sediment on the sea floor to find buried prey, however because its jaws resemble those of swordfish it is thought that it may have used it like swordfish to kill prey. This would involve using its long rostrum to swipe at fish in front of it and causing injuries to their flanks so that they could not swim away. Excalibosaurus seems to have been a relatively rare species, known from only two fossil specimens. It had a highly elongated upper jaw studded with outward pointing teeth, convergently resembling the similar snouts of swordfish or urinodelphus. It probably used a similar hunting strategy, swiping at prey to stun it and make it easier to catch. Like other ichthyosaurs, Uranosaurus was a high-speed swimmer. It used the lateral oscillation of their caudal fluke on a flexible tail stock for swimming. It was probably a deep diver, it had a very large orbit with sclerotic ring, a circular-shaped bone that was embedded in their eye. The sclerotic ring was probably used to maintain the shape of their eyes against the high pressure in the deep sea while they were diving. Temnodontosaurus was an apex predator in the early Jurassic seas. Its diet likely consisted mainly of vertebrates such as fish, plesiosaurs and other ichthyosaurs. It may have also preyed on cephalopods. It is the only Jurassic ichthyosaur genus for which a mainly vertebrates diet has been proposed. It was a fast cruiser or swimmer. Jurassic swam via the lateral oscillation of their caudal fluke on a flexible tailstock. Temnodontosaurus had a highly flexible, long, thin body with a high vertebral count and modest regional differentiation. It used its large limbs as rudders. Its style of swimming was thuniform, unlike more basal ichthyosaurs whose swimming was anguilliform. Ichthyosaurus and modern dolphins exhibit striking examples of convergent evolution. Both species share several similarities, such as streamlined bodies, dorsal fins, and limb modifications for swimming. Ichthyosaurus ear bones were solid, probably transferring water vibrations to the inner ear. Even so, anatomical features demonstrate that it was a visually oriented predator, it had huge, sensitive eyes, protected by bony shields. Coprolites of Ichthyosaurus reveal that its diet consisted of fish and squids. The habits of Stenopterygius were similar to those of present-day dolphins. They spent most of their lives in the open sea, where they hunted fish and cephalopods. One famous fossil is that of a mother and baby that died in childbirth. This proved that ichthyosaur infants were born tail first, just like cetaceans, to prevent them from drowning before fully clearing the birth canal. It was a very fast swimmer, with a cruising speed similar to that of tuna, which is among the fastest of all living fishes. Kaihitasuka was a mid-sized ichthyosaur with a large head and a long robust snout. Its teeth varied in size, shape, and spacing along its jaws, with several different regions that were specialized to catch, slice, and crush its prey. It could also open its jaws very widely, suggesting it was able to tackle particularly large prey. Makes Kaihitasuka the first known example of a Cretaceous-aged ichthyosaur with an apex predator lifestyle, convergently evolving a similar ecological role to some earlier Triassic and Jurassic species. Ophthalmosaurus possessed small teeth with robust tooth crowns and signs of slight wear differing notably from the robust teeth of later species of Platypterygis. It could likely dive for around 20 minutes. 
Assuming a conservative cruising speed of 1 meter per second, it could reach depths of 600 meters or more during a dive, reaching the mesopelagic zone. However, while studies on the biomechanics of Ophthalmosaurus suggests that such feats could be physically achieved, however, it is though it inhabited relatively shallow waters. Brachypterygius is a medium-sized ichthyosaur, with a long snout, as is characteristic for ichthyosaurs, with larger and more robust teeth, and a relatively smaller eye than Ophthalmosaurus. The basiocipital has a very narrow extracondylar area. Named after the monster Grendel from the epic poem Beowulf, Grandelius had a big robust skull with large teeth, proportionally short flippers, and smaller eyes than some of its other relatives. It also had an unusual bony hump on its snout above its nostrils. Platypterygis is a historically paraphyletic genus of platypterygene ichthyosaur from the Cretaceous period. It was historically used as a wastebasket taxon, and most species within Platypterygis likely are undiagnostic at the genus or species level, even being argued as invalid. All anatomical features used to unify species are either not actually present in each species, or much more widespread among unrelated ophthalmosaurs. Generally, species referred to this genus were large-bodied macropredators based on their robust dentition. <laughs>